Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about fossils and how to find them. As a lot of you know, I am studying geology and paleontology, and hunting for fossils is one of my favorite pastimes. It's a great hobby, it's super fun, and I've been asked a lot about it, so I decided to share some of my knowledge with you guys. As you can tell, I'm a big brain science boy because I have dinosaur toys and, and rocks, those are good, and, and I have books. Yeah, yeah. See, big, uh, big, big, big sciencey books, full of, full, full, full of science and, and and words. This is a this is a great book if you're interested in dinosaurs. This is actually the first edition. I have the second edition, but it's at my other place with most of my textbooks. But yeah, yeah. Put that back. So before we talk about how to find fossils. I want to talk about what a fossil is. So, the best definition of a fossil is that it's the preserved remains of an organism in the geologic record, right? So these are remains of living animals that are preserved in rocks. And there's two main types of fossils, body fossils and trace fossils, or ichnofossils. So a body fossil is just what it sounds like. It's the remains of an animal. So when you think of a dinosaur bone, that's a body fossil. That's a fossilized part of an animal. Trace fossils are fossils that were left behind by animals, but aren't a part of the animal. These can include footprints, burrows, and feces or coprolites. Those are kind of the three most common ones. So if you find a footprint, yeah, that was left by a dinosaur or whatever, but it's not actually part of that animal, so it's a trace fossil. The next thing people ask me is, what can fossilize? What, what, what fossilizes? And technically, the answer is that anything could fossilize, but some things are far more likely to fossilize, namely hard bits. Fossilization is a very rare process. It's not easy to become fossilized. There's a lot of things that have to go exactly right after an organism dies for you to be able to find it millions of years later in the fossil record. Predators, they tear apart dead bodies like crazy. So soft tissue gets eaten really fast, doesn't usually get preserved. Bones get drug around and they get exposed to the elements and they weather down, they break, and sometimes they don't fossilize. But if things align perfectly and an organism is buried relatively quickly after it dies, or a piece of it is, then hard parts are more likely to become fossilized. So when you find a dinosaur bone, this is another thing that a lot of people sometimes uh, don't understand, that bone is, yes, it's, a, it's the remains of a Tyrannosaurus rex, let's say, but it's actually not bone anymore. It's rock. So a dinosaur bone is not a bone inside a rock. The bone itself has actually turned to rock. So after an organism gets buried, um, water percolates through the sediment that's above it, and it collects elements out of the soil, it collects minerals and stuff that, get, that are water soluble, dissolves these minerals. And it goes and it gets to the bone, and it seeps through the bone, and it, de and it deposits everything that it soaked up. And so eventually over time, that bone, the biological material, is replaced by rock. And so that rock takes the shape of the bone, but the, the bone itself is gone, right? So things that are hard tissues or, or hard body parts preserve a lot more readily than soft tissue. So bones, teeth, shelled organisms, these are all very, very common fossils. And of course you can sometimes get fossils of soft uh, body parts or fragile, delicate organisms, such as this fossil here of a leaf, right? But those are a little bit more rare. Okay, so now that we know what a fossil is, how do you go about looking for one? Well, the first thing that you have to, have to know is local laws. Whatever country you're in, whatever area, there are laws around collecting fossils. So, kind of a rule of thumb to go by, again, laws vary from place to place, 
but in general, the rule of thumb is vertebrate fossils, you need a special license to collect. Invertebrates, you're fine to just pick up and take home with you. And so a vertebrate, of course, these are animals that have backbones, mammals, amphibians, birds, reptiles. If you find a fossilized bone, leave it where it is, call a museum, call a paleontologist, show them where it is, they will thank you. Invertebrates, so things that don't have a backbone, shells, well, <laughs> shells, like your, your, your clams, mollusks, uh, insects, things like that. If you find fossils of those, typically you can collect them. And so I have a lot of invertebrate fossils. There's a couple of little brachiopods. Those back. Again, check your local laws before you go collecting. In the United States, if you're on a national monument or sometimes even a state park, you can't collect without permission or at all. So if you're hiking around a national monument and you find a fossil, you probably can't pick it up. And I know it's, it's sad, but those are the rules. So first of all, before you go fossil hunting, check your local laws. The next thing, there are fossils to be found pretty much everywhere. I, I've, I've had people tell me, oh, I would love to go fossil hunting, but there's, there's no fossils where I live. There, 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 there's never been a dinosaur found here. Okay, that might be true, but I guarantee that you can drive not too far in any direction and find a place where you can collect fossils. So just do some Googling and see where the closest fossil collecting site to you is. And sometimes, you know, you can do some Googling and find places that, for example, I know several places where you can just pull off the interstate and there's a big rock wall and you can find fossils in there, right? So sometimes there's places like that. The next thing to know is what types of rocks to look in. Fossils, by and large, only occur in sedimentary rocks. So, if you'll remember from middle school earth science, there's three main types of rocks. We're not gonna talk about hydrothermal rocks right now. That's a, that's a separate thing. Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. Igneous rocks, they form from fire. They form from magma. So these are things like your granites, your volcanic rocks, things like that. Metamorphic rocks, they form when other rocks are subjected to intense pressure and heat and they're changed on a mineralogical scale, right? Sedimentary rocks are the rocks that are deposited in ways that we, that, that preserve organisms. And there's a couple different types of sedimentary rocks. You can have clastic sedimentary rocks, you can have chemical sedimentary rocks, and you can have organic or biochemical sedimentary rocks. So, classic sedimentary rocks are things like sandstone. These are formed from pieces of other rocks that have been deposited and concreted together into a rock. So if you have a, an old stream bed, let's say, and it's got a lot of sandstone, those little tiny grains of sand, they came from other rocks. They could have come from the tops of mountains, but they were just broken down by weathering and they were washed into the river by rain. And that river carried that sediment until it was deposited somewhere, sat there long enough, maybe got buried and compacted and it became a sandstone. You can find fossils in sandstone. It's pretty common. There's lots and lots of places where you can find fossils in sandstone. There are a lot of animals get trapped in uh, collapsing sand dunes, for example. The next type of uh, sedimentary rock, the chemical sedimentary rocks, you don't typically find fossils in chemical um, sedimentary rocks. These are things like evaporates, so like your halite or like sea salt. When water evaporates and mineral content in the water is left behind as that water turns to steam and it goes into the atmosphere, the minerals fall out. You don't typically find fossils in that type of uh, water or rock. Um, and then the third kind is the uh, biochemical or organic sedimentary rock. And this is sedimentary rock that is formed through organic processes. And this is this includes things like limestone. 
So limestone is formed by creature, by ocean creatures who use calcite to make their shells. And as they make this calcite and they live and they die, this stuff stacks up and it can form limestone. And there's a bunch of different uh, small organisms that use minerals for shells. Some of them use calcite, uh, some of them use silica. Both of these can accumulate to form um, biochemical sedimentary rocks. In the case of the, the silica and stuff, it's chert. But So yeah, that's very common to find um, small marine fossils. Alrighty, so before I tell you what you're going to need for fossil hunting, let's talk about uh, some common mistakes. So, one is finding things that you think is a fossil that actually isn't. I've got a great example right here. That looks like it's fossilized plants, doesn't it? Yeah. This is actually dendrite. And what this is, is this rock cracked at some point and water ran through it and it left mineral deposits in the cracks. In this case, I'm pretty sure this is a magnesium deposit or something. But it looks a lot like some, it looks a lot like plants, but it's not. It's not a fossil at all. It's formed through different processes. It's not biological in nature. The other thing that I see people uh, do a lot is collect a lot of big rocks and then take them back home and crack them open in, the, in, in hopes of finding a fossil inside. And that can be really great, but um, just because a rock is, is big and round doesn't mean there's a fossil in there. There might be. If you're in the right spot, it's a great it's a, it's a great thing to do. You know, if you're somewhere where you know there's lots of fossils, lots of ammonites, um, maybe lots of crabs in the middle of concretions. Yeah, great idea. But, I mean, I've seen people pull over on the side of the road and pick up these big little boulders to take with them because they're sure there's a fossil in there. Again, just make sure you have the right type of rock. The next big mistake I see, and this is a lot more common <clears throat> than I would expect, is people just finding like modern day animal bones and assuming they're fossils. I've had people come up to me and be like, oh, look at this fossil I found. Look at this, this, that, this, or, or, or that. And then I have to tell them, um, no, that's, a, that, that, that's just a bone. So if you're out hiking and you find elk sheds, and these are really cool, definitely keep it, but not a fossil because it's still biological material. Not a fossil. It does have lint on him. One of the most common ones I see actually is turtle shells. Um, because with, with, with turtles, a lot of the time you can find a turtle shell that's like kind of buried in the mud or in, in dirt where there used to be some water flowing through and then you pull it out and you're like, oh look, I found a turtle fossil. This is not a turtle fossil. This is a just a sun-baked turtle shell. So, you know, just be careful with, with what you're looking at. And uh, yeah. Anyways, now let's go and talk about some of the specific tools you might need. Alrighty, now we're out here. Let's go ahead and go over everything that I've got on me in terms of tools. And yes, it is required that you dress like this if you're fossil hunting because if you don't look like a nerd, you're not doing it right. So, let's go ahead and take a look at everything I've got. Two bags. This bag is my essentials bag. Start with what I've got in here. Obviously, everything you need to survive if you're going out somewhere, even if you're just going for a day, if something goes wrong, your day hike could turn into a week hike. Hopefully not. First aid kit, keep it small, easy to carry. Ruler is very handy for measuring different things you find. Sketchbook, also incredibly handy. Paracord, because obviously everyone needs paracord. Eh. Um, water, 
no brainer there. This little tiny waterproof thing that has matches and survival goodies in there, as well as just some random tools and uh, odds and ends that I might need. I keep my uh, work sharp sharpener in there. So yeah, this bag holds all my essentials and stuff. And if I need to put extra samples in there, I definitely can. Looking in the other bag, gloves. Always, always good to have gloves with you. And then, rock hammer, chisels. I probably won't need the chisels today, but you never know, I might find something that I want to chisel out of a rock. Magnification devices compass, and other useful tools like that. I've got some scratch plates. I've got all kinds of different things I might need for, mostly mineral identification, but they can come in handy for, for fossils as well. Of course, flashlights are good to have. Pencil, pin. Here's my magnifying glass that I just, that I keep on my person. And as for the knives I'm carrying, because I know a lot of you guys are here for the for the knife stuff. Hogue Deca, this is one of the old CPM 20 CV ones, not one of the new Magna Cup ones. And for the fixed blade, Gerber strong arm. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get out there, shall we? Woo! Today's gonna be a good one, I can feel it. It's 100 degrees, scorching hot. It's gonna be a very long hike all the way over there. Gonna be miserable. And I'm excited, because if you're not miserable, you're doing something wrong. Luckily, most of the greatest fossil localities are in miserable badlands, so that step is taken care of for you. But, how do you actually find fossils? Once you choose a location where there's, it's not government land, you're free to collect fossils there, it's not private, how do you actually find them? I'm here to help, dear friend. So the first thing, obviously, is you're going to want to be looking in sedimentary rocks. Fossils don't occur in igneous and metamorphic rocks. It's a pretty, seems like a kind of duh thing, but, you know, it's something good to keep in mind. Make sure that the place you're at has actual sedimentary rock deposits. Now, not every single type of sedimentary rock is going to have fossils in it, and not every single type of sedimentary rock preserves fossils as well as other types. But for just kind of a general knowledge tip, limestone is incredibly, incredibly good at preserving fossils, especially marine fossils. So make sure you're looking at the right type of rocks. Next, look at the base of slopes or where alluvial deposits have come out of hills, mountains, things like arroyos. Because fossils, especially the ones that we're gonna be collecting, they're on the surface. And when it rains and stuff, these things, they roll down the hill and they end up being washed by these arroyos. So if you look through the alluvial deposits at the, at the base of crevices coming out of hills, you'll probably gonna find some pretty good stuff. And that's a great starting point to maybe go up higher. If you're looking for dinosaur bones, it's a, always a great idea to start at the bottom of a hill and slowly comb your way back and forth going up the hill looking for little tiny pieces of bone because those little tiny pieces are going to wash down and if you follow, you might find a little trail. You know, you get a little bone here, you look up a little ways, there's another one, you look up a little ways and eventually you might find a an entire skeleton, which is great. So those are some of the better places to look for fossils. If you go like right to the top of a of a little hill, a little butte, you might find some stuff up there, but um, start at the bottom because a lot of times stuff gets washed from the top to the bottom. And that just gives you a better idea of what you're gonna be finding. If you find fossils that are trapped in rock, obviously be careful with extracting them, but take careful note of exactly how they're positioned, where you found them. This is an in-situ analysis. This will 
give you a lot of information, not just on your specific find, but things that you might be able to find if you do a little more looking. So before you dig anything out of the ground, take pictures, draw a picture, and observe it. You know, if you find, uh, let's think of a good example here. Uh, you know, if you find a chunk of, of crinoids and it's in the rock here and it's poking out from the hill, you might look at that and be like, okay, take some pictures and stuff. Before you start excavating that, before you start just chiseling that out, maybe move back about five feet. Start brushing away some dirt and stuff. Look, there's another chunk of crinoids. Okay, move back a little more, start brushing away stuff. You might discover something a lot better than just the one chunk you found. So if you had just hammered that out of the rock and gone with that, you might have missed out on some really cool stuff. So definitely something to keep in mind. With that out of the way, I will be pointing out certain things as we're hiking, certain things to kind of keep an eye on and uh, look out for. And yeah, we're gonna have some fun. Let's do it. Okay, so this wall here made me want to talk about two principles that are extremely important to both geology and paleontology. And if you are interested in either of those, these are two things you need to be familiar with. So let's go ahead and step back a little bit and let's look at this wall. And the, the sun is not located in the best way for, for filming this, but we'll try our best. Okay, so we can see here there's a lot of different layers here. And this is not a very old formation uh, by any means, but we can see up at the very top, there's soft new soil. Come down here, there's like another layer here. We can see this layer that has all these coarse, uh, large um, sediments in it. And then we've got kind of this thickest layer here, which is, I guess, kind of the, the, the main part of it. And then if we go down to the bottom, you can see this transition from this kind of crumbly stuff to this more solid rock. So the two things that this demonstrates really, really well are what we call the law of original horizontality, which is a kind of a mouthful of a word, and also the law of superposition. And let's explain those. So what we can see here is all of these different layers that we just pointed out were deposited at different times. And we'll get back to that in a second, but you know, they weren't all just put here at once. What we can see here is as they were deposited, they were deposited horizontal. So you have one layer and then another layer on top and like that and like that and like that. And so whenever rock layers are deposited, they are originally, naturally, horizontal. However, a lot of times they don't stay that way. And structural geology studies why they don't and how they change. But basically, the earth is not a stagnant system. The earth is constantly moving and constantly changing. And so if you have layers of rock that are laid down one on top of another, all kinds of things can happen to them to deform them. They can get crunched up and then you'll have the, the rock layers kind of squished together and you'll have like this, this big U, upside down U or A shape and an anticline. They can be crunched down into a syncline. They can be inverted. So instead of like this, they're like this. They can be overturned. There's all types of things. And you, you see this a lot if you're going through like a, um, like a road cut. Next time you drive through a road cut, look out your window and see if the rocks are, if the layers are just one top of the other, or if there's some change in there, some waviness. Maybe there's just some, you can see things that are just like broken, like one's right here, then there's some layers over here. Keep an eye out for that because that's really interesting stuff, especially to a lot of geologists. So next thing. The law of superposition. I know it sounds great, superposition, but um, it is great. I was going to make a dirty joke. We're not going to do that. So we talked about how these were not all laid down at the same time. And basically the law of superposition states that layers are stacked on top of each other in order of age, right? So if we're looking at this little formation here, the oldest stuff is what I'm standing on. This hard rock. This stuff is younger than it, but older than this stuff. And this stuff is younger than this, but older than this. And on and on and on. And that is very, 
very important. It seems kind of simple at first. Like, you know, well, obviously, if one came first, another comes on top of it, obviously this one is older. But again, like I said, when rocks get deformed, it's sometimes hard to tell what was what. And this is really important for fossils because dating fossils is kind of a big deal. And so one of the ways you can date a fossil in the field is if I were to find a fossil right here and I'm like, okay, here's this fossil. I'm not sure how old this is, but I know that this formation is uh, overlay overlaid by a Triassic formation and underlaid by a Precambrian formation. I mean, that's a huge discontinuity there. I know that this has to be between those two ages, and so I can give a relative age to the fossil I just found. So, a little bit of a tangent, but it's really, really cool stuff. Let's keep looking for fossils. After following this sandy creek bed for hours and hours and hours, <laughs> I came to this little uh, shelf of limestone. This has got some interesting features. See these cracks here that are filled in with calcite, big veins, and we have our first fossil of the day. A big old gastropod. Oh, and look at this. Uh, Look at these calcite crystals. It's a pretty big rock. <sighs> We're not taking that with us, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, I'm running out of daylight and my phone is running out of juice, but I want to show off this really cool limestone formation right here because it has hundreds and hundreds of gastropod fossils in it. There's one. There's more. And there's one. A lot of the best ones are right here. There's a really pretty one. Look at those. So at some point, there must have just been a huge colony of snails living right here. They all got buried about the same time. Oh, look at that. A little bit of coral. Oh, look. This is really cool. So this... You know, these are kind of snails on their side. This one kind of tilted a little bit so we can see the different ridges from a different perspective. There's a couple of them. Ooh, here's one that this white stuff, that's calcite that was deposited inside his actual coils. And then the, I guess, enamel on the top wore away and you can see that. It's really cool. Ooh, and look at this. Get away from me, fly. Here, some really lovely coral. Awesome. <laughs> Moving along, crawling on all fours. Yeah, they're just, they're just everywhere. So, I might not have found exactly what I was wanting to find today, but we saw some cool stuff. And you know what? The hunt continues another time. Right now I want to use some of my water. Don't worry, I've got more. It's gorgeous. Oh, look at that one. Alrighty, well, it's about time I headed back. Let's do it. I am currently working on editing my fossil finding video, which you're probably watching right now. 
And I came across some footage that I took over a year ago about a particular fossil that I found. And actually, I still have the specimen in the back of my truck. And so I decided that it's a kind of cool rock to talk about. I'll show it to you guys. So here in just a second, we'll go and we'll look at the fossil um, and also talk a little bit about how I found it and the crazy obsession that went into that. By the way, this whole video, this fossil finding video, it, I'm compiling over a year's worth of footage and it might be a little bit of a mess, but uh, I'm working on trying to edit it into something halfway watchable and maybe I'll split it into two parts because there's a lot. But for now, let's go look at this fossil. So here's a particular rock we're going to be looking at, and yeah, my the back of my truck is full of all kinds of rocks, some for research, some for personal enjoyment. I need to unload these in my rock pile on these days. But this big slab of beautiful pink limestone right here weighs about 110 pounds, and I found this while I was out just doing some fossil hunting by myself one evening, and I was actually getting ready to leave when this rock caught my eye and I knew I had to have it, and so I spent a long time digging it out of the side of a hill um, to then carry several hundred meters to my truck. That's not a good idea if you're out fossil hunting by yourself. Don't do stuff like this. It's stupid. You know, if you've, if you've got backup, go with backup. I'm, I'm an idiot. Don't be like me. But the thing that caught my attention is this fossil right here. So let's get in close to that guy. This thing was very interesting. I'd never seen anything like it. If we look at the rest of the rock, very similar to a lot of the other stuff that I was looking at in the area. We've got these calcite veins coming through here. You can see we have lots and lots of crinoid fossils. Uh, some of these are actually some pretty good crinoid bits. There's a, there's a pretty good size stem there. Um, the rock actually, I got it in several pieces. This is another chunk of it right here. That's mostly calcite. This broke off, but it did have a couple of crinoid bits and pieces on it. There's a chunk right there. If it'll focus up. Yeah. But I also came, uh, a couple smaller pieces broke off. In fact, I have some of them on display for my review cutting in the background of the, the knife reviews I do. But yeah, so this big piece here, um, immediately caught my eye and it had dirt on it and stuff when I first saw it and I thought it was a crinoid cusp. So you see these little discs and kind of tube shaped features here. These crinoids, they kind of look like plants even though they are animals and they grow in like these big tree looking formations. And so these stems will support kind of this head. And so if we look at it like this, we might see that was a base where we have a stem growing out and then there'd be kind of little arms and filaments coming off here. But as I started, as I started, you know, digging it out and I start cleaning this up with water, it just started looking weirder and weirder to me. And you can see here, it's got a very, very unique texture. So it is common to, or I mean, not common, but it is possible to find full crinoid colonies most of the time you'll just find little bits and pieces like this. And so I was kind of excited if this was, you know, a, a crinoid cusp or, or head. But uh, the more I started looking at it, the more I started wondering what it was. So anyways, I got this dug out. I took it to a couple of professors I know. Uh, I showed it to some friends of mine. One of my friends, she put it up on her, on this uh, Facebook fossil page, just seeing what people thought. And um, I got a lot of comments about this. Uh, several of the professors I took it to thought it might be a uh, echinoderm plate, so something that a certain, um, like a uh, like a sea urchin might use to put itself on the uh, it, its foot, basically. Um, a lot of people thought it was a, a crinoid head. A couple people th thought it looked like bone, which it does kind of look like uh, bone, but um, just knowing what I know of the lithology of the area I picked this up from, this limestone rock here is probably middle to late Permian, so 260 to 250 million years ago. Obviously a marine environment. I'm not sure, 
I mean, it, it is possible that we had marine invertebrates in those oceans at the time, but I don't think it was likely that um, I'd be able to find preserved pieces uh, in this particular formation. But, you know, it is possible, right? So, yeah, and now I've just been carrying it around for like a year. And <laughs> every, uh, every time I meet another geologist or paleontologist, I always, I always like show them this. And, yeah, it's just kind of a, kind of a cool rock. So now we'll go ahead and show you the footage I took on how I got this out of the mountains. Okay, so I found one of the coolest things I've seen all day. It's this pink rock. I hope I'm showing this off good, but look at all these crinoid fossils in here. Oh, and look at that. I got some kind of shell, some kind of, I think it's a pelicopod of some sort. It's a big rock. And I'm going to get it out of there. Time to get to work. Okay, so first off, show the sophomore. Look at all those gorgeous fossils. Fantastic. So first off, I saw that this stuff is already loose. So that, look at that. Yeah, baby, that's coming home with me. Some of the most beautiful crinoid fossils I've personally found. Yeah, that's some big ones. Okay, so now I have those out. I wonder how much of this it goes aside. Oh! All right, it's gonna fight me, but I'm gonna win. Okay, so here's what I've done. I dug a trench out uh, around the rock to try and see how big it is. And I think I now know how big it is on this plane. So what I did next was I took my uh, rock chisels and I drove them in down there. We got a little bit of movement. So now I think I can just push it up this way towards me. That's that's the idea at least, and I'm losing sunlight, so let's let's make this fast. I think it's wanting to come. A little more tugging. <laughs> I think we're almost there. Okay. Come on, I feel you moving. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Oh, that is a heavy boy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now to get this to my truck off this mountain. Alrighty guys, so I just got back from doing some fossil hunting with a friend of mine. Uh, we went out and uh, did a little bit of looking around. Uh, Jaron, if you're watching this, hello. Uh, my buddy Jaron, he's actually a, an engineer with an astronomy focus, really cool guy. And so a couple weeks back, we went out and he had his telescope. We were able to look at uh, some celestial bodies, saw the rings of Saturn, which completely blew my mind. Really, really interesting. And so this weekend, uh, I took him out fossil hunting. You know, 
compare the two worlds, right? And so, uh, yeah, I, we had a lot of fun, found some great stuff. I will show that off here in a little bit. Um, but I took, I took a couple of videos uh, while we were up there, not as much footage as uh, I could have, but I took a, took a couple of videos. Um, we started off in an arroyo uh, because everything from the slopes of hills ends up in the arroyos. When water runs through, it brings a lot of stuff down with it. So we started off down there, found some beautiful brachiopods, and after continuing along for a little ways, we start going up the hills. And so what happens when you go up the hill is you find more specimens kind of in situ, uh, things that are embedded in larger rocks that are stuck in the hillside. Uh, so we found lots of coral, lots of snails, uh, some crinoid colonies, uh, things like that. And yeah, found some pretty cool stuff. We'll show it here in a little bit. Let's roll some footage though. So here's a cool rock here. Got lots of corally bits in there. Also these large fossils here that I can't quite identify. And a pretty good little brachiopod. More coral. I'm here fossil hunting with my buddy, Jaren who's an astronomer, so I'm not sure what he's doing here. <laughs> he's catching on fast. So as always, start low. See what you see. Just a couple of shell fragments here. Oh, look at that. It's an entire little gastropod. It's pretty cool. Look, ah! It's a bigger gastropod. What'd you find? Here we've got some more shell fragments. And here we've got some coral pieces. This big piece of rock here's got some got some stuff on it. What? This rock has stuff on it. I mean, it, it, it's stuff. I can't tell exactly what it is. It's broken, but it's it, it's stuff. It's shiny stuff. <laughs> and up here, oh look, we've got all kinds of stuff on this rock. <laughs> we've also got mud cracks. Crap in this one. There are mud cracks here with lots and lots of crap. And you almost became a uh, fossil candidate. There's a snail for you. <laughs> Ooh! Look at that big boy. That's a good one. That's like almost as big as that one that was yeah, in that rock I couldn't get. The one that got away. <laughs> Lots and lots of snails up here. And more calcite. Oh, look at that. Got a snail and coral on this rock. Cool, cool, cool. So oh, this is the best snail we found. As soon as I turned off the camera, I just found this in there. Look at that. That is probably the best snail I've ever found, period. That is... That puts this one to shame. Yeah, it's, this is a good one. Holy cow. This, this might be my favorite find of the day. That is absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Anything else here that I can grab? Man, oh man. Yeah, that is something else. All right, so here's what I collected. Uh, I don't have I don't have Jaren stuff here, but he found some pretty cool stuff too, some really cool uh, fossils actually. He learned pretty quick, so yeehaw. <laughs> uh, let's start over here with the big stuff. 
Uh, I collected a couple of specimens of this, uh, of these shell fragments. I was finding this stuff all over the place. I can't find it, so maybe I didn't pick it up. I'm sure I did. I need to put it in one of the crates. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to this piece here. This is a nice chunk of rock. I picked this up for a couple of reasons. Number one, you can see the little crinoids there. I really like the texture on those. There's some gastropods in here. There's a big gastropod right there. Yeah, lots of cool uh, cool shapes in here. Once I clean up this rock, uh, I'm sure it'll look fantastic. We've got some some good textures down here. Maybe a couple of coral bits and pieces. There's a really cool. Uh, it's a really good piece right there. Very fine textures. I uh, really like to see that. Uh, here's a little chunk of limestone with some bunch of different brachiopods in it. I picked this up just because it's kind of shiny. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, not bad. Uh, moving on to this piece here. What is this piece? Why do I have this? Ah, uh, this was more of that, uh, more of that shelled organism. This is not a very good piece of rock. I mean, there's lots of different... <laughs> There's lots of fragments in there, but I'm not sure why I kept that one. And I'm not sure what I did with the, the one piece I thought I kept. That was really awesome. Hope I didn't drop it somewhere. Uh, here, another little chunk of limestone. We've got all kinds of critters in here. Got some coral. Got some either brachiopods or some other type of maybe a clam-like critters. But yeah, pretty good, uh, pretty good little piece of, of rock. Here is a piece. Uh, most of the good specimens that I was finding of this guy were in huge rocks, and I couldn't pick them up because I'm not superhuman. This is really cool. I like the, the crinulations in that shell fragment. Really, really interesting. Um, I like it quite a bit. Uh, here we go. There's another little piece that's got little bits of crinoids, some coral, a couple of little shells. I like this stuff here. Let's focus in there. I like that little star-shaped piece. So yeah, cool stuff. Uh, moving on, let's go. Let's talk about my gastropods. Actually, let's talk about these things here. Um, so I've got a bunch of these long critters. This one's definitely a crinoid stock. Let's look at these all separately. So this one I'm pretty certain is a crinoid. Uh, I think all of them are, but I'm not quite sure. I'll have to do a little bit of research. might be some coral. This one's interesting. Uh, this one I'm pretty sure actually is coral. I don't think this one's a crinoid. But yep, there's those. Now let's move on to some of my snail fossils. Uh, we'll start with the we'll start with these two here. Called these my two nipples. <laughs> uh, pretty interesting. Uh, pretty sure these are just the. Uh, pretty sure these are snail bits. I'll do a little bit of research into what they are. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that's what they are, though. Put those down. Here's a complete little snail got to be where we were finding quite a few of these. It was uh, pretty cool. They were 
they were everywhere i i pretty good spot for finding snail stuff honestly I, I never really found a whole lot of snails there before we went up on the slopes there's another one Let's see him curling in there uh here's a here's a tiny guy we might look at some of these tinier specimens under micro uh, magnifying glasses at my table at some point yeah this guy's too tiny to, there we go tiny guy. Again, apologies for wind. Here's an even tinier guy. Cool. Um, are those all my little smelly guys? <laughs> okay, now on to the good ones. This is, this is really cool. Look at those fibrous, I thought that was calcite for a second. Oh, my, I'm not sure. Look at that. That is good. That's a cool one right there. And now for probably the best fossil I found all day, one of my favorite fossils I've ever found. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Now, these may look like ammonites, um, the little nautilus type of uh, type of creatures. Uh, I'm fairly certain that these are, are gastropods. These would be like snails and, and such. Um, I'll talk about that more. Why I think that more later. But look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? Absolutely amazing. Okay, and then here I've got like a bunch of calcite pieces I picked up just because, I don't know, the calcite was looking really cool today. <laughs> yeah, let's turn this way. Concave piece of calcite. Uh, but yeah, I picked up quite a few pieces of calcite. Here's one that's fibrous. It was growing in a crack, forming a vein. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, we'll show this guy off because this guy's itty bitty. This one's. Really, really cool. I like that guy. Here's another, here's an itty bitty clam. Pretty cool. Uh, here's a piece of coral. Focus up. And here's a piece of coral that I liked because it's still kind of in its tabular form. Maybe a little deformed, but still really, really cool. like that a lot. Uh, here's a brachiopod that uh, is either a species I haven't seen here before, or these growths are not part of the actual shell. But I, th I think these little wings are part of the shell, so I'll have to see what species that is. Um, some crushed shell bits. Nothing super special uh <laughs> which have got a ton of bracket pots here here's one i picked up that was still in the rock uh, pretty cool um here's a nice big one let's look at the texture on this guy yeah that's a good one right there that's a good one um, here's one that's also pretty good. I think this was the first fossil we found that day, actually. Today, I, uh, as I was walking, uh, we'd been out of my truck for like two minutes and I, I found this. Pretty good one. Uh, here's one. That's pretty nice. I don't think we'll show all of them off just because, yeah, they're all just brachiopods, but. It's a really good one. Um, oh, this one I really like. Yeah. So there we go. And we'll go look at some of these closer uh, under my, uh, under some magnification. This is just the, the, the coolest thing ever. I, I love that. I love that. 
excellent, excellent fossil. <laughs> so it's like almost one in the morning. I've been editing the... <clears throat> now we're going to leave it in. I've been editing the fossil video. Uh, I'm on spring break right now, so I've had a little more time to edit and, and work on stuff. And, um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this, you know, just kind of showing off some adventures I've had fossil hunting. Of course, I can't record every time I go fossil hunting. And, you know, there's a lot of things that um, I found that I didn't show you. In fact, some of my best stuff that I've ever found, I, I didn't show in this video. I will save those for those things for other videos. But hopefully I gave you some good entertainment value. Hopefully there was some educational stuff and hopefully... I gave you some pointers on how to start fossil hunting for yourself if you're ever interested in that. It's definitely a very worthwhile hobby. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I know this was a long one, and the editing, I'm almost done. I hope it's halfway coherent. There was, there was a lot of footage <laughs> to go through, and there was a lot of just rambling and muttering to, to cut out. But... Um, yeah, in the future I'll do some more videos on some of the topics I touched on in this video. We'll talk about um, more things related to stratigraphy, we'll talk about index fossils, we'll talk about specific species of fossils perhaps, we'll talk about evolution, we'll talk about things like that, but I'll save those for scripted real videos where I'm more concerned with, with making sure I'm saying the right thing instead of just muttering to myself out in the field. So anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and adios.